31st of January 2022. I knew this show was called Married at First Sight, but I don't think I really understood. Whatever, I don't like this show at all. Let's keep going. Can I watch more? I'm not going to do that for a television show. Sorry, 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 sorry. From news.com.au. News.com.au. I'm Andrew Buckalo, and I've got news for you. Well, it's been called trash, uh, degrading, absolutely appalling, and was last year voted as the worst show on TV. But despite all of that, viewers just absolutely love Married at First Sight. It's one of the highest rating shows on Aussie TV each year, and yet another season is about to kick off. Today, we'll get an ex-contestant to reveal some behind-the-scenes secrets about the reality show, including how much money they get paid. You don't get paid at all. This This is a thing that needs to change. Um, well, they give you an allowance to live off, but they don't pay you. News.com.au's James Weir will reflect on the most disturbing moments from the past eight seasons of Maths, and we'll also take a look at the worst reality TV shows that have ever been made, including the infamous There's Something About Miriam. I'm not a woman. Oh. I was born as a man. <laughs> Mikey Pembroke appeared on season 7 of Married at First Sight back in 2020. Now, his relationship with his bride didn't work out. They exited the show after just three weeks. Mikey, thanks for coming on. I've got news for you. No worries, mate. All good. All good. Here to help. All right. So tell me, what made you want to go on a show like Maths? Um, It was sort of why not uh, rather than why. I suppose I was, you know, late 20s. Uh, I did really think that, you know, there was a small, small chance that, you know, you could end up with the person that was right for you. I hadn't found the person yet. So I sort of threw my, threw my hat in the ring. I knew that the chances were there's going to be a lot of um, drama, but I thought I could handle that. Um, but yeah, it ended up being a bit of a, bit of a, I, was, uh, I don't know if I can swear on the show. show but it, it's shit show. It ended up being a bit of a shit show, <laughs> wanting drama. Um, and I was out of there within like two weeks of filming. <laughs> All right. So talk to me about the test that you have to go through before joining the show. I'm assuming there are psych evaluations. Uh, no psych evaluations. Oh. You just you basically just fill out a form in regards to you know your previous life, what you've got been up to, what you've done, so they get a bit of an understanding. But that's something they should definitely, that's something <laughs> they should definitely do. But then you wouldn't get the characters, so probably big boring <laughs> TV, and they wouldn't get the ratings. So yeah, mate, it, it was interesting. It's just a form online, but I never finished my form. I just sort of got a few questions. It was too long, and so then they just contacted me. It was an in- interview over Skype interview in person and that was it off you off you went you got the call that you're in it and then um they do a bit of a back bit of a backstory with you in terms of filming you at work etc trying to you know uh pigeonhole you a bit so people can understand what you're about and um off you go up up on the aisle um i am assuming that during the casting process you had to tell them what sort of women you're interested in do you feel like they actually listened to you or they just matched you with someone no 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 no, no. <laughs> they didn't listen to me at all and i have no problems being honest about this because I knew that they would – I thought they would pick some sort of qualities that I would like and yeah. then other qualities that I would struggle with. So there's sort of a love-hate, you can understand. So they'd have some sort of um, argument to say, oh, but you asked for this, that's what we gave you. But they didn't do that. And I knew straight away, um, walking up the aisle, and completely, you know, complete respect to the, who they partnered me up but partnered me up with. But, yeah, we were definitely not, not going to ever match. Uh, this is a question we always get here at news.com.au, so I'm going to put it to you. How much do you get paid to be on maths? You don't get paid at all. This is this is a thing that needs to change. Um, well, they give you an allowance to live off, but they don't pay you. So you don't actually have to claim it as tax, so it's not paid. It's an allowance to live off during the week while you're filming. It's just our, from when we did it, it was about 1000 bucks. But given the show makes an incredible amount, amount of money, um, just like today, say a TV show. So if you're on, um, you know, a, a TV show that's really well, the actors get paid more and more and more because yeah. it does really well, right? That, that's the way it should be for maths. At the end of the day, we're the the, the stars of the ones, or you know, the the, the, the contestants, reality yeah. stars. I don't know if you'd call them stars. <laughs> people, people on the show, um, you know, they're the ones that are putting themselves out there. They're the ones that get the backlash. And then the channel makes millions and millions of dollars through advertising. And this is one of my pet hates with it. It actually does. Like, it's the leading show in Australia. Yeah. Those advertisements, they'll be paying massively. And the guys on, you know, and the girls on the show are only getting such a, you know, they're getting nothing. They're getting allowance to make sure they live throughout the time. They're giving up their jobs. Um, they're putting themselves right out there. And, and most people look at maths. It's like look how they look at real estate agents. Uh, you know, they just roll their eyes when they say <laughs> you've been on the show. And a lot of these people don't know what they're getting themselves into. They get nothing for it. But the thing is, I think they do have power. If they say, 
you know, I want more. What they do is they just pick someone else who do it for less. But yeah. when you're in the show, so for example, when I flew to, um, I, I, I got off the show early. There was a bit of obviously a bit of controversy around my my <laughs> my tenure on the show. <laughs> anyway, I went over to Italy. Um, and they wanted me back. Now I could have probably played them to get paid serious money from them for coming back. Uh, I didn't know at the time, and I probably couldn't fly first class after 20, 30, 40 k. And I reckon they would have done it for sure. All right. um, but you know they were desperate to get me back for the reunion. Now, you know, if it was to future stars out there, I would definitely play that card. It's pretty, pretty hard to play at the start because you know you, they will just kick you out and find someone else. But otherwise. Um, you know, they're trying to make you do things against your will. Put a price to it. Yeah. You know, everyone, everyone's got a price. Put a price to it. <laughs> Once you're on the show, what's the filming like? Are you followed by cameras 24-7? Um, no, you're not filming. Like, you get your briefs sort of the day before. They really try to surprise you. They want natural reactions. So they don't really give you a full outlay of what's going on and what's happening. What they do do, though, is they will put you in uncomfortable situations. So before you film, they might leave you. Um, so we fl- filmed at a warehouse. I didn't know what time I was getting on cameras. I didn't know who I was seeing. I was kept in a room with like some treats and water, no air conditioning. So they put you in situations where you're already a bit riled up. You're already a bit uncomfortable. You're not happy. So you may be sitting in a waiting room for six hours. Then you get a call. Okay, you're going on camera now. Bang. So you could imagine what kind of mood someone's in if they've just been sitting in a room by themselves with not knowing what's going on. Um, and at the end of the day, they do want drama. Like we were told um, multiple times – you know, they'd stop filming um, and, you know, the, the the producers would come in and say, guys, nothing's happening here. What are you guys doing? This is not how you would act in real life. All right. So they do really want that. They do anything for that drama. Well, speaking of the drama, we've heard past contestants say that producers encourage them to have affairs, to hook up with people that they weren't matched with. Was that your experience? No, it wasn't my experience. Um, it wasn't my experience at all because – what what they don't like, right? Because a lot of the a lot of the affairs, a lot, a lot of the things that go on were behind camera on my season. Mm. They didn't like that because how do you? They need to film it so the, yeah. the the audience can understand the journey. If you just come back and then like, oh these guys too hooked up, but you have no context of how they hooked up, it doesn't make any sense. So if if you went to the producers and say, hey, oh, I'm into this girl, I'm sure they'd film it and agree with it, but. With, with some of the things that were happening on our season was behind the scenes. They're like, no, we don't want that because it's confusing the, it's confusing the storylines. Um, the dinner parties, for those who haven't seen Maths, is where all the contestants get together. They have a big meal, a lot of drinks. Usually there's a lot of fights that happen. How long do those dinner parties take to film? Mate, I've, I've got home. I've, I've, I've left the building in the city to film, and this place was just maybe 20 minutes away. I left, I've, we started filming sometimes at 6 in the morning with outfits, what do we expect at the dinner party? Who we're going to have a go at? What's going on? And then get to the actual warehouse where we film around sort of 2, 3 in the afternoon um, and then literally get home at 5 a.m. Whoa. So you're talking about 12-hour shoots in the, within the whole thing. As I said, that you'll be in waiting rooms. You'll be brought in. You'll be brought out. They'll interview you. Um, and, you know, these, these things, yeah, it's, 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 ma- it's massive efforts considering – you know, a lot of these people, they're not used to shoots at all. Well, yeah. I wasn't. I'm, you, know, you know, I wasn't an actor and I also wasn't like a model. So, um, yeah, they you can understand at three in the morning why people are going off at each other. Um, and, you know, the food, there's not that much food. Is that right? But then again, you don't really, yeah, you don't really want to eat on camera anyway at the start. <laughs> and so by the end of it, you're sort of like, you know, there's not much there. Um, and then when it starts to die down, that's the only time they really stop filming. It's really up to the, it's really up to us. Like when the drama stops, um, or maybe when it gets too much, they stop filming and they don't, they don't let you drink too much either. People think, oh, they just get them drunk. They don't do that because people can't articulate the way they feel when they're drunk and it's not good TV. People are slurring. It makes no sense. Um, so a lot of people go, oh yeah, do they get you drunk? Do they get you smashed? I'm like, no, I've, I was actually cut off from drinking a few times. Oh, and so right? Other, yeah. So the other car, cast members, because they're all happy for you to have, you know, one or two or three drinks. Um, but you know, they don't want you to get shit faced. But another thing as well, like, you know, they encourage they, the people going on the show are adults. They do encourage you. They do encourage drama. Like I'm sure a lot of TV shows do reality TV because that's why a lot of people watch. But they don't make you do things against your will. Right. You know, these people aren't going on the show. They're not 16. They're not 15. They're not a vulnerable persons. Um, you know, they do. They can lead a horse to water, but they're not making you drink. So, you know, it is people that make their decisions. It's just people find it very hard to understand what the situations are going to be before they put themselves in it. Um, and then usually it's too late. If it's too late by the time they're in there with um, some of the actions they take. Having been on the show, can you watch it now? Uh, I haven't watched – literally haven't watched much of it at all just because I just 
it's just not a genuine show. Mm. You know, it's not a genuine – look at the success rate. I think two couples of 10 seasons or something. You'd have better luck for, if you were vegan – Finding your partner at a butcher store, um, <laughs> like literally, that—that's the—that's how bad the success rate is. Um, and you know, but you know, that, and, and I just I, I, now that I know what it's like from behind it, I don't buy into it. And I think it's getting worse and worse and worse. Like, don't get me wrong, I've got no—I I like the cameras. I'm not going to pretend I just went on there for love. I knew that there was a, and I was sort of at a stage in my life where I was like, you know, why not? What else you got to lose? Like, people go, what about your image? I'm like, what image? <laughs> yeah. No one knows who I'm. I don't care. And then you do get forgotten about. Like when the show goes off, you you know, six months there, it's pretty like smack. But then before you know it, yesterday's news and you get on with your life. And that's probably why I don't regret it. But um, yeah, it's um, it's something that I don't buy into anymore because it's just it's just not genuine. And I think they're trying to change it every, every year. It's got a sort of a different direction and it'll be interesting to see what they do this year. Joining me now is news.com.au's James Weir. He has built up a massive following over the years by recapping Married at First Sight, so much so that people actually just read his recaps and don't even watch the show, which I'm sure Channel 9 just adore. James, another season of maths is about to kick off. How do you feel when this time of year rolls around? Uh, Bucklow, uh, chills, heart palpitations, <laughs> uh, the RSI and my wrist flares up because I usually start scrolling through LinkedIn for other job opportunities. <laughs> Um, it's a really interesting time of year. Yeah, it sounds like you really love your job. Um, okay, talk to me about recapping the show. How does it work? Like, do you get the episodes in advance or do you just watch it live? Uh, sometimes I don't even watch them at all and I just write what I want. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Most people don't even notice. Um, If I am lucky, I'll get the episode ahead of time, sometimes a day in advance, sometimes a few hours, sometimes it's just rolling out on the screen. Uh, And I think, you know, you and I have worked in the same office for a number of years. You see how seriously I take it. You know, it's a two screen operation. I've got my note, I've got my legal pads out, just reams of paper as I, as I, you know, jot down notes in freehand. Uh, And, you know, as I always say, if if you, if you want to think like them, you got to drink like them, you know? So, you know, sometimes if you're talking to an Irish person and you take on their accent and, you yeah. kind of, and you're cringing at yourself but you can't stop it, I'm the same. I really get into the headspace <laughs> of Married at First Sight contestants. Uh, I, you know, I'm glassing people in restaurants. <laughs> I'm driving cars off roads. I'm stealing people's husbands. You know, if it's, I think that it adds a touch of authenticity to yeah. the recaps, if you will. Well, it's a commitment to the job and mm. I totally admire it. Um, obviously, they're a hit with the public. They get hundreds and thousands, if not millions of views each time you publish one. But I'm wondering, what do the contestants think of these recaps? Do you ever hear from them? They adore them. They, <laughs> <laughs> they adore them, <laughs> some more than others. Um, I think the ones who do like them maybe... I wonder whether they read them properly. Yeah, right. Whether they really understand them. <laughs> uh, you know, other people, you know, you'll often get an email maybe at three in the morning. Uh, I call them the dark nights of the soul, uh, <laughs> where it's kind of, uh, you know, they've kind of watched it themselves play out on screen and then they've, you know, it's, it's a different, it's one thing to hear your own words like said back to you on screen. It's another thing to read them in text. <laughs> <laughs> they never come up well in a quote, do they? They never do. And if you've ever done that, like if you've ever spoken, in public and then someone's quoted you in a story and you read back and you go, God, I sounded like an idiot. (laughs) Who is that? That's how I think a lot of these people feel. Um, I think the thing that really cuts to the bone for them, though, is when they get turned into a meme. Right. But really, I just think that's really the pinnacle for a maths contestant. (laughs) If you become a meme celebrity... That's one for the resume. Yeah, you've made an imprint on social culture. Okay, um, you've watched all nine seasons of the show, I feel for you. Mm. There have been so many shocking moments over the years. Give me three of the most disturbing. The one that instantly comes to mind is toilet toothbrushes. Okay, what happened Uh, there? uh, I mean, it really, uh, you know, the name (laughs) says it all. Uh, A husband really didn't like uh, his wife's uh, bathroom hygiene, so he decided to use her toothbrush to scrub the toilet. Oh. Yeah. Um, You know, and it's changed the way I brush my teeth forever. (laughs) And it makes me like I like I you know I just I haven't been in a long term relationship since that episode. I'm thinking maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> uh, it's brought up trust issues for me. I always think if I ever got into a relationship, I would need to just do like single use toothbrushes <laughs> because right. I could never trust my partner now. Disposable <laughs> ones, disposable toothbrushes. Did she know that he'd done it? Like, did she use the toothbrush after the yes, incident? Yes, for many days afterwards, and it only really came to light because he decided to uh, record himself on his phone doing it and then send it to the boys. 
And look, video footage tends to circulate in the Married at First Sight <laughs> universe. <laughs> <laughs> so he got busted. So he got busted. So that was the toilet toothbrush. That's really probably the most shocking. Uh, the other one uh, would be uh, the C-word scandals with Innes. You know, uh, her husband got so fed up with the way she was treating him that he called her a C-word. Oh. And then the experts piled on him for using the C word and then because they thought, oh, the Australian public is not going to like that a woman got called the C word. Yeah. Oh, the, f- the script got flipped like a Bugs Bunny cartoon <laughs> and all of a sudden Australia was like, no, she was a C word. <laughs> the We're experts got it wrong. You know, only in Australia will we endorse <laughs> the, uh, the primetime labelling of someone <laughs> as a C word. And I was thinking, you know, about maybe the, the big third scandal. I was going to say cheating, but really it's that's part and parcel for this oh, show. 100%. It's not shocking anymore. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the most shocking things, almost uh, eyebrow-raising things about this show really happens often. Off the screen, and we've seen it in the last two years, where um, you know the contestants on all reality shows, you usually see them embrace their their newfound public profile, and they do a bit of a career pivot and become an influencer. Yeah. On Married at First Sight, they're not. They don't want. Just, they don't just want to be plugging away like teeth whitening lasers on Instagram. You know, off brand veneers. They're not about that. It's all about OnlyFans now. That's the oh. big career pivot. We've got uh, Jessica Power, uh, Michelle Karen, who on some tabloid websites they've labelled now Porn Grand, which <laughs> really, when I come into my twilight years, that's how I want people to know me. Yeah, uh, she'd be what in her fifties or porn, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Jessica Power's brother, who. Were appeared in the first episode of, like, when she got married. Do you remember her hot brother, Reese? Reese, yes. Reese, and Australia went nuts for him because he was so hot. He had the neck tattoo. He's on OnlyFans now. You should check his Twitter out. All of them, they've got Twitter where they post little sizzle reels of what you might be able to find on their on their OnlyFans. I feel like I know them intimately than I ever wish to. Uh, Hayley Vernon's also got one, and they're all keep, they all keep bragging about how, like, oh, put down another deposit on, my, on an investment property after two months on OnlyFans. You know, it's really made me consider um, yeah, <laughs> you got to do it. Maybe do I, I, you know, look, maybe I'd do it two ways. I think if I signed up for OnlyFans, uh, it would work a little bit different for me where fans would pay me to put more clothes on. <laughs> 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 and on OnlyFans, if you don't know how it works, you, you 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 pay your fee and then you can tip them to do things. So, like, I think I'd be getting tips from people <laughs> saying, like, put on another cardigan. <laughs> do we um, know on these OnlyFans, are they doing full nude gear? Oh, oh yeah. Really? Yeah, Porn Grand goes there. Oh, my yeah, God. There's, like, um, I, I mean, it would be, look, for this PG podcast, Buckler, I wouldn't, look, it's such a highbrow uh, <laughs> thing that you've started here. I wouldn't want to bring it down to the gutter. Um, but everything, God, things that you never thought you would want to see and probably don't, you will find on OnlyFans. Um, But, you know, they've also... I even thought... For my own OnlyFans, I could recap the maths OnlyFans and get a bit of picture-in-picture picture action going. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a Celeste Barber doing the celebrity post, but you doing the maths OnlyFans ones. Well, well, no, because that would require for me to Celeste Barber the, the maths contestants. It would require me doing the same things that they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is all a ploy just for me to see you doing weird things with a toothbrush. Yeah, yes, yes. And you know what? I will make you pay the $5 subscription fee. <laughs> Well, James, uh, good luck recapping this year. I hope there are plenty of scandals for you and um, don't drink too much. Thank you. I'll catch you on OnlyFans. Alrighty, here to run us through the most shocking reality TV shows ever made is news.com.au entertainment reporter Bronte Coy. Bronte, what are we kicking it off with? Oh, there's so many to choose from here. But first one is a show from the UK called Shattered. Now, this one aired in 2004 and the premise was pretty simple, Bucky. Ten contestants were challenged to go without sleep for seven days. Oh, Absolute God. nightmare. No thanks. Pun, mind the pun. <laughs> if at any stage they closed their eyes for more than 10 seconds, they were eliminated from the show. Each day, one contestant was picked for a you snooze, you lose challenge where they'd have to do an activity that induced sleep, such as a facial massage or listening to a bedtime story. <laughs> I fall asleep in a cinema, so I mean honestly. In the end, the show was won by a 19-year-old woman who stayed awake for 178 hours. That, I wonder if they drug test them. <laughs> yeah, That is just so brutal. I cannot imagine going on a show like that. Also, it doesn't actually sound very interesting to watch. Anyway, let's move on. What's another effed up reality show, Bronte? Uh, There was a show from the US called, wait for it, Who's Your Daddy? Basically, (laughs) (laughs) Basically, this woman who'd been put up for adoption as a kid met with eight different men and had to guess which one was her dad. Oh, my God. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> if she guessed correctly, she'd get $100,000 in prize money. But if not, the man she picked would get the money and she'd get nothing, not even a family, it seems. <laughs> there was a happy ending, though. The woman did actually pick her real dad and they had a heartwarming reunion. It wasn't a day that went by that I didn't think about you and regret what we did. I started looking for you because, well... I, I know, I, I looked for you too. I did. <laughs> well, you found me. Oh, well, I am thrilled that they eventually found each other, but who's your daddy? I don't know. It just kind of feels a little bit sexual, the name of that show. Maybe Finding Your Father would have been a little bit better. Anyway, let's move on. What's another reality show that should never have got made? Okay, so there was a show called Playing It Straight, which had versions in the US, UK and even Australia. Oh. There you go. Basically, a woman had to spend time with a group of men, some of whom were straight, some were gay. She'd go on dates with them all and would have to figure out who was gay and vote them out. At the end of the show, she'd pick one man and... Okay, so if he was straight, they'd share a million dollars in prize money. Oh. But if she picked a gay man, he'd get to keep all the cash. Yes, so- go gays. <laughs> so, look, this is absolutely wild. So I'll give you a taste. Here's what happened on the UK version after the woman booted one of her suitors. I've got to, I've got to do this. I have to know, are you gay or are you straight? Yeah, you've made a mistake. I'm straight. Okay. All right, babe. Ah, uh, sucked into her, picking a straight guy thinking he was gay. I mean, that's a bit of a blow to his confidence, you'd imagine. All right, we're running out of time here, Bronte. Hit me with the most shocking reality TV show of all time. What is it? All right, well, you probably remember this one. That would have to be There's Something About Miriam. Mm. So this aired in the early 2000s. It's so infamous now. It was kind of like The Bachelorette, but honestly much worse. Six men from the UK had to try and capture the heart of a Mexican model named Miriam. But here's the twist. They didn't know Miriam was a transgender woman. That was only revealed to them in the final episode. I'm not a woman. Oh. I was born as a man. Oh, man. Oh. Is there anything you'd like to ask Miriam, Tom? Well, I'm obviously shocked, as you can guess, so I don't know, really. I'm kind of lost for words. Honestly, the whole concept of that show is so offensive, Bronte. Like, I can't even believe it got made. I can't believe it was made so recently. Like, it was in the yeah. early 2000s. It's absolutely wild. Uh, well, there's something about Bronte, and um, I don't know <laughs> what it is, but I'm looking forward to finding out. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. Well, thanks for listening to I've Got News For You. Now, just a reminder, make sure you check out James Weir's Married at First Sight recaps on news.com.au. I promise you, they're better than the show itself. Trust me. Uh, All right, I'll catch you again tomorrow. Bye.